Hello, I'm JW, and today we're going to look at that Stonoff 16 amp switch and see if it can in fact switch 16 amps and uh, what kind of temperature it gets to when uh, that sort of current is shoved through there. Now I've already looked at the insides in a previous video, so there will be a link to that in the usual places. But uh, we're going to connect this up, and this will be at uh, main voltage. So we're just going to find a selection of items we can attach to it to get to 16 amps or so. Now we're not going to be able to go much above that because bearing in mind it does have that 20 amp fuse inside. So uh, realistically you're not going to be able to go above that 20 or so for any length of time. Now here's the test arrangement I've got set up here. So here's the actual switch itself. And we're just going to use the button on the front here to turn it on and off. I'm not going to be connecting up to the app or anything because we're not really concerned with that here. So it's just uh, on and off here. This is the power coming in. And this is 2.5 square millimetre cable. So this is easily capable of supporting the 16 amps. And in fact quite a lot more than that. Now on the output, again it's the same cable coming out, and I've just got the same piece here and I've just split it here so we can use this clamp meter to see the current that's going through, so this is purely on the output. And we're using this because the other meter we've got only go up to 10 or 15, so obviously no good for 16 plus. This is a temperature monitor, and I've just shoved it through the hole here, and I've actually taped the thermocouple sensor directly onto the circuit board where the track is for the current going through the relay. So we should see that increase as current goes through. This is current temperature of 8 degrees centigrade, so it's pretty cold at the moment. And then the output goes to this twin socket here, and in here we've got this one, which is an electric heater. It's on the floor, it's out of sight. And then we've got this one, which goes to these two here. This one is another electric heater. It's actually a fan heater, so it may make a moderate amount of noise. And then this one is a vacuum cleaner, that's going to be very noisy, and that's uh, say in the range of 1200 odd watts, so that will add a decent amount of power as well. So we'll uh, start out with just turning on the ones that we've got here, the two heaters which are reasonably quiet, and then we'll see what happens to the temperature as things go, and say currently it's about 8 or 9 or so there. And of course current is currently 0. So I've just turned on there, I don't know if you can see a little blue thing flashing there, so it's really trying to connect to some uh, Wi-Fi or whatever. And we'll start out with just this one, which is the uh, first electric heater. So we'll turn on here. And we can see the current here is uh, 6.8 amps, so that's uh, heating away there, so that's fine. And again, we should see this rise a bit. I mean, it's not, it shouldn't rise hugely, but it's going to rise a bit because putting current through any kind of conductor generally causes it to heat up because of course it has some kind of resistance. And we see that it's just increasing to 10 there. And we can also see on here the little red light that's come on which indicating the power is connected. Now 6 amps is well within the capability of this, it's supposed to go up to 16. So uh, let's turn on some other stuff and see what happens. Now I'll turn the other one, that's actually a fan heater. Uh, we can see the current here is just under 15 amps, sort of 14.8 or 14.9 sort of area. So this is pretty near the actual rating of this device, so about 1 amp under. So we'll leave that going for a bit and see where the temperature goes. And see we're already up to 21 here. That was starting around about 8 or 9. And to say this is not unexpected, so we'll see where it gets up to. And bearing in mind 24 is only sort of uh, moderately warm room temperature, so nothing too disastrous there yet. Now that's around 10 minutes, and the temperature's got up to 59. It doesn't seem to be moving much now. Current is the same, pretty much 14.8 there, so just under 15. Now uh, that's fairly warm, but uh, not anything that's going to be particularly dangerous. And uh, say, if you think about PVC cables, they're generated to around 70 or so. So uh, 60 is certainly pretty warm, but again, we are running this near the maximum load. And the other thing to consider is that when we started the ambient temperature in here was about 8 and it's now around 18, so the actual air temperature has increased as well. So the next thing, just see if this will actually switch that on and off at the 14 amp load. Well, yep, it certainly does, and see the current has now gone down to 0. And again we can switch that back on. Get the current coming on there about 15 amps again. This is mostly a resistive load. The fan heater does have obviously a fan, but the vast bulk of that is going to be the actual heating elements, which of course are purely resistive. So it's certainly capable of switching that load, no problem. And again, that's pretty much what you'd expect. The relay inside was rated to that. Now I can just turn on the vacuum cleaner here, and we'll see what difference that makes to the temperature. Now the vacuum cleaner is fairly noisy, so obviously we won't be able to 
torque as well at the same time, but we'll see the current here should increase fairly significantly. And the vacuum cleaner is a fairly inductive load, so there'll probably be a bit of a spike initially. And obviously then it will uh, level off at some appropriate point. So we'll uh, just turn that on now. Now I saw there was a uh, considerable overload from the 16, it's rated 4 and the temperature is now up to around 84, 85. So I certainly wouldn't recommend running this thing anywhere above the rating of the thing, so 16 should be considered its absolute maximum. And see now we're just back to again the 15 amps again, which is uh, so probably realistically where you want to run these things up to. And we see the temperature here is still in the 80s, which is really a bit too hot. But uh, nevertheless, it's not enough to set things on fire or cause any major problems there. And we'll see that we should uh, gradually decrease as the current load is obviously now more in the sensible range. Now I've just turned off the fan heater, so quite a bit quieter. So we'll see the current now is in uh, sort of 6.7 amps there. And uh, we we'll see the temperature now is dropping away fairly quickly, which again is pretty much what you'd expect with the less current going through the device. So I think in uh, conclusion for this, Certainly running it up to in the sort of region of a UK plug, which is basically 13 amps, that's not going to be a problem. Pushing it up to sort of 15, 16, it is going to get reasonably hot inside on the printed circuit board, but again, nowhere near to actually cause a fire or anything. But certainly going above that in the sort of 18-odd range we had there, it is going to get fairly hot fairly quickly, so definitely not recommended. So, say put it on a plug with a 13-amp fuse and use it to control a single load, no problem with that. Here's a quick look at the heaters we'll be using. Uh, this uh, fan heater there is an EMI one. I have actually done a whole video on that, so uh, link to that in the usual place. And then the other one was this uh, Belling heater here. This is a Belling Champion. Originally this was gold, but it's been repainted silver some years ago, and that's also been displayed in a couple of other videos, although I haven't actually been taken apart in one. And that has no fan. And then the vacuum cleaner is just that one down under here. And as you see on the front there, it's 1250 watts, so a fairly powerful one. The sort that's now been banned by the EU because they're using too much electricity. Now, uh, you see the temperature on this thing now is down to about 53, because of course there's uh, only the single heater running from that. So uh, in terms of overheating, it's not going to be a problem unless you definitely go over the 60 amp rating of the device, which of course you shouldn't be doing. Now, it's got a 20 amp fuse inside, which does seem a rather odd choice. If you're going to get one of these, then you might want to change that fuse for something more sensible, say a 15 or something like that. But uh, nevertheless, if you're going to be up wiring stuff in the UK to say a plug or something, then you're going to have a fuse in the plug anyhow, such as the uh, 10 amp one that's allegedly inside that one, or more likely a 13. Now I've disconnected the power from this on the other side, so uh, let's just have a quick look inside, see if there's any obvious damage, though you wouldn't expect so with uh, those, those temperatures. The top of it is moderately warm there, which again is not unexpected given the temperatures we saw inside the device. So uh, let's just uh, pry in here. And see what we've got. So there was the sensor basically just taped down onto the track of the circuit board. The tape's kind of a bit uh, gungy obviously from the higher temperatures. And we'll just use that hole in the side which was convenient to shove that through there. So, so there's the inside. I mean this was the track we were measuring which is basically the one that comes uh, directly to the relay and goes over to the wires here. That was actually the output and then the input over that side. So there's a fuse you might want to change say to a uh, 15 or something. So that's a 20 which seems a rather odd choice. But certainly in terms of switching the load, I mean, there's no problem. And although this gets warm, then uh, again, that's not unexpected. Even 70 or 80 degrees is not going to cause any damage or discoloration to that. These terminals here are the sort of press down and uh, shove the wire in. They do take uh, 2.5 square millimetre flex here, which is quite useful. That's pretty much the maximum you're going to get in there, but you're not normally going to be using that uh, on, say, a 13 amp or something plug. Sort of 1.5 would normally do just as well. So uh, in terms of that, I think a reasonably uh, successful test there, and certainly no problem using that up to its rated load. 
Of course, if you go above the rated low, then uh, it's going to get rather hot rather quickly, but of course that's only to be expected. Now, uh, whether the casing is flammable or not, we'll have to test outside. It's pouring as rain today and uh, it's also dark, so uh, we'll do that another time. But certainly in terms of using it within its rated capabilities, then no problem there. And until next time, thanks for watching.